welcome back to another edition of Ten Buck Test Bench. And today we're going to do a brief rundown on salvaging components for the young players. And we've started tearing our scope apart. We have a good deal of it torn down at this point. We have that stinky old power transformer removed. And we're salvaging all the good components we can out of here. And we will take some of our newly found test equipment and put some values on this stuff a little bit later in the series. And so far, we've gleaned quite a bit of stuff out of this unit. Useful things. Vacuum tubes, a lot of hookup wire, switches, potentiometers, a lot of useful little knobs, uh, binding posts. Those will be great for some future project. I have salvaged the little green window from the front of the scope and I think I'll be using this to do some repair on the $3 signal generator and I'll show you that in a later video as well. Now before the old timers come in here and tell me we shouldn't be saving this or we shouldn't be saving that or they should have rolls of hookup wire blah blah blah. This is for the kids guys. This is for the kids who don't have access or the resources or dad might be too busy to go down to the hardware store or the electronics store and find them parts. I'm going to be pulling the electrolytics out of here. I'll be pulling these, what I believe are paper capacitors out of here. We're going to test them. We have $10 test bench gear to test them. Yes, I would normally throw all of those away. However, some of them may or may not be good. We're going to use some of the test equipment. We're going to find out what's good and what can be added to the stash. So, I'm gonna move the camera in a little bit here and show the young players a couple of tricks. All right, to aid in disassembly, I'm gonna use my old Weller soldering gun. Uh, this is my tool of preference for stripping down these old chassis. It makes a lot of heat real quickly and I can set it aside. And I'm using one of my 12 gauge uh, homemade soldering iron tips. Just another trick that you can use now. Why I'm using this, some of these components are easily unsoldered and you can save the lead length. It'll make them far more useful if you can conserve as much of the lead length as possible. And again, normally I wouldn't be saving electrolytics, but some of these may or may not be good. We can test them. We have our 10 buck test bench equipment downstairs and we're going to test some of this stuff. I, when I was 14, I couldn't afford to run down and buy new electrolytics. And today, some of these are three, four, five dollars a piece. Remember, we got the scope for free. If we can salvage five or six electrolytics out of here, we're dollars ahead of the game. And no, I wouldn't use these to repair customer equipment. And no, I wouldn't use them in stuff that was expensive for repair purposes. But for experimentation, for the young players on the bench, this stuff is ideal. We've got a ton of resistors here with a lot of lead length. These capacitors, a lot of lead length. A lot of hookup wire. And when I say hookup wire, we have a ton of it we're pulling out of here. And I'm doing this outside because, quite frankly, this thing reeks. I have never had a transformer expel such vile stuff before. I don't know what came out of this thing. But I'll be washing it all down. Uh, most of these components, when I put them in the bucket over here, I won't put the potentiometers in there, of course. But these components can stand getting wet. I'll spray them down with uh, either Fantastic or Orange Clean or one of those solvents and let them soak a little bit and then dry them off. And they'll be just fine. It won't hurt them at all. This paper cap I probably won't put in there. But these ceramic-y, uh, epoxy-filled units, it won't hurt them at all. It'll be briefly washed down. And again, we're going to test them with our 10 buck test gear. So I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to get some more of this stuff out of here. I just wanted to show the kids how to make the lead length as long as possible and keep your components okay. useful. Thanks for sticking with me. We now have a bare chassis, which I prefer to think of as a blank canvas. We have our front panel with everything cleaned off of it. 
and the young players might want to go ahead and just use it as it is they probably wouldn't mind a few extra holes but if you wanted to put a fresh panel go to the uh, home improvement store buy a sheet of aluminum have dad cut it on the table saw with a um, carbide tip blade carefully wearing safety glasses this will throw all kinds of little pieces of metal around when you're cutting it but you'll end up with a good looking panel then you merely clamp the two panels together and you can transfer drill the holes through with the two panels clamped together and everything will line up with the holes in the enclosure and you'll have a fresh front panel that can be painted and drilled to your specifications over here we have the empty box these little strips of sheet metal I used to find come in handy for all kinds of little things. Down here we have some various components which we're going to look at in a second. And over here we have a pan or a Tupperware container. Just chock a block full of useful stuff. And believe it or not, we're going to be using this stuff very soon in the series. We're going to recycle this and use a lot of these components and show you how they're useful. And if we come back, i got to stop saying and so much. Somebody remind me of that. We will come back here to this section, and I'm going to show you one more trick before I end this video. And hang on a second while I lower the camera. Okay, and you're probably wondering why I'm going to the lengths to save all of these little terminal strips. Again, the older guys are looking at it through the eyes of somebody with a little bit of disposable income. We were at the ham flea market this weekend, and a friend of mine who wants to remain anonymous, but I'll call him Cubo, he knows who he is, bought some of these. And I believe he paid a dollar a pair for these. So here's one dollar, here's two dollars, here's three dollars, here's four dollars. That's more than I paid for the RF signal generator, which was $3. It's more than I paid for one of the voltmeters, which was a dollar. The other one was $5. It's more than I paid for the transistorized voltmeter, which was free. So here we have enough money saved to buy a voltmeter or an RF signal generator or the three dollar um, frequency counter that I purchased. Did I pay three or five for that? At any rate, you could have bought any of those pieces of test equipment for the amount of money that these cost alone. And we're going to be using these very soon in the series and you'll see why. I've purchased another one of the AM Super Heterodyne uh, transistor radio kits and my intent or plan is to breadboard that so that we can go through it section by section and show you how each section works and do some experimenting. So have a little patience. We will be getting to it. Now one last trick for cleaning these components up. Getting all of the parts off of here and cleaning up the solder pads can be a bit of a chore if you don't know the trick. Now I'm going to show you a trick that I've been using for years and I'm going to use a block of wood here because we don't want you doing this on mom's kitchen table or on the, uh, on the coffee table in the living room. That'll have your projects come to a screeching halt and nothing flat. And let me separate these two here. I'm just, I'm not going to save that piece of wire. But we might want to save these resistors. The leads are long enough to use as is or they can be extended with a piece of wire. And while resistors aren't all that expensive, there's probably five or seven dollars worth in this pile. And again, the more you can save, the more test equipment you buy. So I'm going to heat up the solder joint right here until it gets good and molten. And then I'm just going to strike it sharply on the block of wood. That component is pretty much free of solder. With a pair of needle nose pliers, you can unwrap that from the terminal now and save that resistor. And I'll do the same thing again down here. In fact, the resistor just fell off on its own. I didn't even have to unwrap the leads. I'll have to recover that from the grass here in a moment. And again, you see this one's ready to be just taken right out. Uh, I'll take the other end of this lead out. Let's get that guy warmed up and just give it a quick sharp blow on the block of wood. 
and that resistor is loose and free and ready to come off. This end's got a little bit left on it, but if I just grab the end of the lead, now there's so little solder left here, I should be able to just unwrap that, and there's our resistor. Ah, the other end's hooked. Give me time. A little patience. There we go. We now have brown, black, red, a 1,000 ohm, no, no tolerance band, 20% resistor, but a 1,000 ohm resistor, if I carefully straighten the leads out, you can see we have plenty of lead length left, a useful component for basically free. And there's one thing you kids know you have, it's plenty of idle time versus dollars. You may be short on bucks, but you got plenty of idle time. Stop watching The Bachelorette, stop playing Grand Theft Auto 23 or whatever they're up to now. Uh, that's a socially redeeming piece of software, Grand Theft, Theft Auto. Hmm. At any rate, go ahead and turn on the Bachelorette in the background, as a matter of fact, and let it run in the background is, as, it is, you know, just keeping you company while you're working. And I can almost guarantee, oh, somebody's being chased down, I can almost guarantee that 20 minutes into it, you're not going to even notice the TV anymore. You're going to be so engrossed in what you're doing here. Uh, one more component I want to go after. Hang on a second, let me dig it out. Okay, we have a couple of chokes here. There's one here, and there's one here. And we're going to carefully remove those. Uh, chokes are not really easy to come by unless you buy them online. And We can save these two components, and again we're going to use the simply strike it on the block of wood thing. And I can unwrap that with a pair of pliers fairly easily now. And I'm going to do the same with the next two terminals. And again, we're going to be using these components very soon on the test bench. And we'll be using our $5 and $10 test bench equipment. If you remember, we bought a little unit that will do measure capacitance and inductance. We'll be able to find out exactly what these are. Now, they do have a color code on them, but they may be a Bell & Howell color code. They may be a manufacturer's color code, or they may be e e yeah. EIA, we don't know. But until we uh, get them on the bench and get cleaned up. But at any rate, we're not going to bore you with cleaning all of this stuff up. We'll do that off camera. When we have everything cleaned up, we'll put it on the bench. We'll figure out exactly how much money we've saved. And I'll bet it's a considerable sum. I bet there's well, of, uh, well in excess of $100 worth of parts here. And that's certainly a cost savings for the young players. We'll get that done. Put them all organized in bins. And then we'll proceed with building some projects. Of course, we'll have to fix some of the test equipment. I, th I have to uh, fix the scale on the $3 uh, RF generator. And uh, we'll check that inside. We'll change the filter caps. We'll make sure that everything inside the $3... Uh, Signal generator is kosher and up to, to uh, standards. Get it calibrated and show you how to use it to align your receiver. For now, I'm the radio mechanic. Get out there and start taking apart that dead electronics. Get some components saved up so you can use them and follow on in future videos. See you soon. Bye-bye.